is it a good time to buy rental properties and uh, if it is then what are what are the better options out of single family home a condo a uh, multi family home or a, a business property or land each asset has their own pros and cons if i add in into the mix land and commercial property it's totally different risk the the way it plays out developers that go bust and lose all kinds of money i mean that that is a higher risk investment so every level or stair step you take up probably has a little higher risk along with a higher reward it would be a disservice if i say that oh it's a good investment to buy land or if i say it's a good investment to do office buildings or a mm, apartment complex how much risk you can take and how much money that you have liquid to participate in making sure the asset is going to give you the highest and best return you both have 20 plus years of experience so based on both your experiences as of today if you want to look for next investment property where would you buy what range you will be looking for what you will be looking for in the property and what kind of roi you will be targeting identify properties in good location that's my thing location is everything for me location if is good i'll go for it and the negative cash flow we'll see what it is right now is it a good time to buy rental properties and uh, if it is then what are what are the better options out of single family home a condo a uh, multi family home or a, a business property or land you know i was just looking from i boy struggled a little bit with the multi plex i i have people that have bought that but sometimes they're very difficult to find and the price tag is very very high to get into that type of an investment so most people can't afford to get into that investment because it's a huge down payment and it's a higher price tag um condos and you know they'll have an HOA fee but then you don't have all the maintenance cost of the exterior so sometimes it can be a good solution and you always have to look at you know what can i make in my rent versus what my mortgage payment would be is is the biggest factor i don't think there's a huge spread between that but you know over time appreciation and paying off an asset using the bank's money is still it still feels to me to be a better investment than possibly losing money by just keeping your money in a savings account so yeah i mean you, you when you're comparing like single family homes to an apartment complex or land so there i would say even though they all fall into the asset class of residential uh, real estate each asset has their own pros and cons if i add in into the mix land and commercial property it's totally different risk the, the way it plays out single family homes are the easiest wherein the risk is the least you buy a single family home you are not competing with a whole lot of homes for rental it's easier to rent then if you go for town home or a condominium you are buying one unit typical of condominiums are like a cluster of homes if you rent listed for rent there is always somebody who is directly competing with you the same floor plan same setup so you have to be competitively priced if they ask for 2000 you can't ask 3000 mm-hmm. you have to be at 1950 says so a single family home you you not have that much of a neck to neck competition then the next step over it if you want to buy like a triplex or a fourplex or an apartment complex to fourplex you can do the same 20% down and buy it mm-hmm. so cash flow wise it works just like a single family home but you have multiple units the risk is slightly lower because you are diversifying it you have four units even if one unit is vacant still three are occupied when you go into apartment complexes so once you get into apartment complexes it becomes a commercial loan it's not a conventional loan anymore so the loan terms are always higher in interest rate than the regular so so that is even more risky it's more for more savvy investors and then the next step up is if you go for office complexes a complex like the building that we are sitting in it's even more riskier because you don't know if the business is good in the area you you can occupy it otherwise it might sit vacant for years we had a time after we bought this building 
half of the building was vacant for almost a year. So the investing person investing should be have should have the financial prowess to keep it vacant and still weigh the 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 tide and wait for the tide. Mm-hmm. When you go into land, land is an extremely risky uh, investment because you need to either have the money to develop the land wherein you'll have the highest and best value out of it, or you have to be able to hold the land with no cash flow. And then wait for the market to come and develop around it, so that you can flip and sell it to somebody else. So it could be twenty, thirty, forty years before you see the land. Have you any return? And you pay taxes, and you don't have cash flow in the meantime. So, and it's harder to sell. It takes longer to sell. But I mean, I've been looking a little more into the land. If you develop the land and get it, get it all prepared for maybe single-family home development, I think you can probably do do okay still in certain areas. But again, that's a bigger capital outlay. So it just depends on how much money you have to put out. But um, I mean, every it's nice to diversify too. I mean, if you think of the game Monopoly, that's my best analogy is usually you start with like a couple houses and then you move to a duplex or a fourplex and then you move to an apartment. So it's really a stair step approach and then it might be commercial. Because like like you said, with commercial, if you're totally vacant, you you gotta cover you gotta cover that cost. And you gotta be able to cover that cost during the downturn. And then your long term gain might be much higher with that, but also your risk is higher. Uh what was the other investment that we talked about? Apartment um land no. land development. Uh developers make a lot, they can, by developing properties or or putting several single family homes up. But then you also hear developers that go bust and lose all kinds of money. I mean, that that is a higher risk investment. So every level or stair step you take up probably has a little higher risk along with a higher reward. Risk and reward. I mean, I would say if you have like limited income and you have a limited risk that you want to take, then I would say single value. You can get up to like ten single family homes easily with the with the IT jobs and the uh, fair uh, financial stability. I would maximize the opportunity with the single family homes. I would not go into land and all that yet. Even though we hear a lot of times people have made a lot of money on land, but we've seen many more lose money on land, including myself. I lost money on land, so it's a it's a it's a risky proposition according to me. I think, and I think I remember from one of our earlier discussion that uh, for the land, banks will not give loan to you. Right. You have to have liquid for that. Most of the banks, during recession time, they are going to even tighten it further. So land loans are almost gone. If you're a big corporation, if you, if you have a lot of cash reserves, then you can go into development. Then they'll offer you some kind of financing. But for a normal person, with no hacking land loans, we can't find it. You have to pay complete cash for it. Or you have to do a construction loan. You have to pay your land off cash and then do a construction loan to then build on the land. So that's the stair step approach. A lot of land that just sits there because it doesn't sell right away. Like I have a piece of land right now in Gold Canyon that's a beautiful lot. Somebody could build on it. And, and it's been sitting there because most people don't have Oh, 250,000 cash just to buy the land and then develop it on top of that. And so what we're looking at right now is an owner carry where we try to get somebody giving us $50,000 down and then my owner will carry the rest in order to allow the buyer to move to the next level and then build on the property. For the land, I think uh, we are talking about one category, but within the land also there could be multiple uh, types or it can be bought with a different purpose. For example, I saw a few few weeks back, I, I was reading one article from one guy who bought a property in a remote area, nice uh, like uh, jungle kind of uh, area, jungle and mountains. And then he bought a nice area, was very cheap. He built a couple of cabin kind of uh, like temporary structures and he was renting those out and he was making good money on those. <laughs> But if, if you are in Phoenix area and you want to buy a property like that, it might not be feasible. The city will allow it. In Maricopa County, the more centralized you are, the, uh, the, the government typically doesn't allow for anything other than a single family detached home. So you can't just go put like a fifth wheel or a, 
I get a lot of people that call me and that think that they can buy a couple acres and put like a mobile home or a structure. And you can't always do that depending on the area. The further you go out and buy land, possibly the um, counties will be a little more lenient on what you can and can't do. So before making any of that type of investment, you have to be very in tune with the city ordinances. You have to make phone calls to the city, ask them what's allowable, talk about the setbacks. Sometimes you can buy a piece of land and you think you can just build everywhere, but you can't because there's a ravine on this side, there's an easement on that side, there's a setback over here. So there's so many things that that are gonna be at play with land. And, And the best place to start is oftentimes just many phone calls to the city. Sometimes real estate agents don't even know all of the rules that are dictated by that piece of land. Because it is still the buyer's, you know, it's their responsibility to do that due diligence when they make a purchase. Because sometimes a real estate owner or a real estate agent or even an owner of the land, they may not know everything about that land. They may have inherited it. So it's a lot of due diligence and it's on the buyer's shoulders. So it will be a disservice if I say that, oh, it's a good investment to buy land. Or if I say it's a good investment to do office buildings or a mm, apartment complex because it's not a loaded answer the loaded answer should be how much risk you can take and how much money that you have liquid to participate in making sure the asset is going to give you the highest and best return for a normal person who is working full time who doesn't have too much time single family homes are like a no brainer investment it's easier to at least get your you know, get started. Um, the the land buy where you put multiple properties on. I mean, if you're working a full time job, I don't. You're going to need to make it a full time job to to understand everything that goes into getting that done. Yeah. And, and so it's very time intensive, and um, it, there's also a lot of upfront cost in order for you to. Because let's say you do the development and you need to develop the land and figure the layout and then you need to have the plans for each individual house and then you need to have the water and the electric and the sewer so there's a lot of layers to developing that land to making it a feasible investment and usually that entail it could entail a couple hundred thousand dollars just to get out the door to start putting your structures up to then make cash flow down the road so most investors that are just starting aren't going to have the financial means to to get it off the ground. So uh, the next question also overlaps a little bit with this. So the question is asking, how do we understand that uh, an investment property that we are buying is going to give a good return on investment? What are some tips and tricks to find such uh, properties? I mean, the, the basic research, the tools that everybody has access to, you go to like Zillow or Redfin, you can see the property value. Zillow these days also has a rental estimate, how much rental estimate you can get. Then it has a projection on what the future value could be. It has a projection on what the future rent could be, right? So you use those numbers and you put in a simple spreadsheet and say, okay, what is your mortgage? And then see how much cash you're going to get. That is that is a, that, that is a rough calculation to know how much which area can be done. See, all of these have become easy now than it used to be 10 years ago. And so th- that's one way I tell my clients to use these tools that they have at hand to figure out what their ROI is. I mean, there is, there is more dimensions to it. Like, for example, right now you can go to Maryville and then buy properties in, in Central Phoenix, wherein the cash flow is outstanding in the sense that you can buy something for like 500000 it will give about $4,000 a month. But the property is so dilapidated, you will not have too much appreciation. So you have to look at both long-term appreciation potential plus the cash flow, it's just not cash flow. So what I told you with Zillow's calculation, you just can calculate the cash on cash return. But what about future appreciation? What if the property is 500 right now and if it's going to be 400 after two years or three years? These properties are built in 1960s. 
you have to invest a lot of money to bring it back up. Or what if you have to totally demolish the property because it's so old and the plumbing's so bad, you have to start all over from square one. So, you know, sometimes a lot of, uh, I, what, I remember my very first investment in real estate, I thought I was really smart at the time. And I, I saw $500, $600 cash flow every month. But the home was old. Everything needed to be replaced. It had two air conditioning units. It was a bigger home. So bigger home, bigger problems. So my cost to get it up and running really appropriately was very extensive. So that ate up so much of my cash flow. I mean, I spent way more than my $500 cash flow for the first three years in that property, just replacing air conditioning units, making sure the plumbing was working correctly. So sometimes cash flow isn't the only um, only way to measure your success with the property. The condition, the property condition is super valuable. Uh, the area, the jobs in the area. Uh, and, and whenever you do, maybe you want to do a quick calculation using some of these websites like Zillow, but definitely if it's something you're going to purchase, you want to double check it with a licensed real estate agent because sometimes those numbers can be really far off. That Not always, um, but but they can be. And then there's mortgage calculators online where you can plug in your numbers. You can say, I'm going to put 20% down. And what does that look like? And on a lot of investment properties, you have to put 20% down to make it work. So um, the, the only other way to invest that is to move into a property, maybe put 5% down, live there two years, move again, live there two years, move again. Because otherwise, you know, you're you're living in a house and you're buying an investment property, you got to have 20% down. That, that That's a terrific housing hack that uh, we, we talked about, wherein you move there and then buy it as a primary, then upgrade to another house, either sell or rent it, and then keep doing 5% down. Let me ask you both uh, this question. You both have 20 plus years of experience. So based on both your experiences as of today, if you want to look for next investment property, where would you buy? What range you will be looking for? What you will be looking for in the property and what kind of ROI you will be targeting? It, it, it's a loaded question. See, right now I'm looking for a lot of uh, office buildings. I love office buildings and I feel that there is not much competition in there. And since I have full-time staff under me, we are able to market them and get them rented. So for me, office buildings are super attractive at a time wherein a lot of companies are downsizing and a lot of companies, a lot of investors actually seem to think that office spaces are gone. After COVID, we were able to buy office properties for cheap because investors have pretty much disappeared thinking that office market is gone. They all flock to the multifamily apartments because there is a lot of gurus out there talking about apartments. But my specialization is office buildings. I like office buildings and I, I, I like to do that. Then the next best for me is single family homes. Single family homes doesn't need too much of my time. It's easy to manage. Mm -hmm. Then there is a lot of demand for tenants. So I don't have to work as hard as my office building to find tenants. Mm -hmm. I love single family homes because I can only do 20% off. My office buildings are happening 20, 30% off. Some of them are 40% down if it's completely vacant. So the cash on cash return, if I, if I look at it, office buildings are extremely attractive, but then I have to put more cash out. So I like single family homes for that. I don't even look at town homes or condos. They are out the door for me because the HOAs are now creeping up. They are like, they used to be 150, 175. Now they are going up to 350. Mm -hmm. I sold a condo because the HOA was 450 a month. Granted, they have pool. I don't know what. Maybe they have gold everywhere in the community. I don't know. 450 a month for HOA. So I sold that condo because cash flow didn't make sense. It used to be 150 10 years ago. Yeah, I, I mean, I've 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 actually bought a condo that was newer that I cash flow on, but it's a vacation rental, and it's near Intel, so it's a location. That so it's three fifty a month with a heated pool and a gym and all of that, but it it cash flows like over a thousand dollars a month, easy. Oh, nice. And so that it does have a high HOA. So I still think it's location, location, location. So I'm not a hundred percent against townhouses and condos for that reason because sometimes they can be brand new and they can just really bring up a high dollar amount mm -hmm. um i get extended leases from people that are here for corporate reasons that will 
pay me $4,000 a month, you know? And so I'll make anywhere from one to $2,000 cash flow on, on a condo. So I wouldn't say they're totally out, but you don't have control over future um, price increases for your HOA. That is one thing you're never going to control on something like that. Um, but I, I've been interested. My newest interest is is warehouses. I've been doing a lot of studying and trying to learn on that because I feel like we have a shortage in our market for that type of a property. And like office space, it's not like super bad headache as far as managing it, yeah. you know? Uh, but Yeah, th- 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 there is a lot of opportunity. The first thing is the mindset. Once you get into the mindset, oh, okay, what's my risk? What's my reward? If the risk, riskier thing happens, are you able to withstand it? Then just go for it. So that's what, I mean, it's interesting. We both have, are looking at two different, complete different kind of asset classes within real estate. And I know we both will again meet around because the returns might be the same because the risk and reward. Now, it is safe, safe as though you always go back to single family homes. I mean, at least if you're starting somewhere, that's an easy way to start. And then, I mean, back to the game of Monopoly, that's where everybody starts. You know, you don't start with a, a you know, 200 unit apartment building. You just don't have the means to do that. You got to start somewhere and grow from there. So it's baby steps, you know, the turtle wins the race, all, all of those things. Yeah. Uh, going back to the cash flow part, uh, is there a number that you would usually target? Like if I buy a, a single family, I would target at least six to eight percent of uh, you know, return in cash flow per year, something like that. For me, the, there is no rule like that. But what I try to do is I try to make it close to break even for the rent. There was a time when the cash flow was exceedingly high in Arizona. That's why people from California, East Coast, they all came here and bought. Because if you buy a property for 200000 you can get $2,000 rent. That was the rule of thumb. Hey, if I buy something for 3000 300000 I want to get 3000 rent. It, it was possible at one point of time. Now the Now it's not possible. So your ratios have changed. Now you have to look at long-term rate of appreciation also. But in general, I look at the cash on cash return. How much down payment am I putting down? And then how much return I am getting every month? How much is a negative or positive cash flow? Obviously, we want to like to be in the positive. But there are some great assets with a lot of potential to grow, which are negative. A negative cash flow, but still we end up going it because we know that Rents are going to go higher in the future. So it's like this, right? Right now, the negative is going like this, but the rents are going up like that. So there will be a point wherein they would intercept mm-hmm. and then the rents are going to take off. So that's what happened to our office buildings. When it's vacant, it's negative cash flow. And then as the economy recovers, the, the rents go up. So then you end up being in the next plateau of fuck, getting cash flow. So I don't have any any percentage. But I try to identify properties in good location. That's my thing. Location is everything for me. Location, if it's good, I'll go for it. And the negative cash flow, I'll see what it is right now. Positive, it's good. But what is the negative right now? Or can I withstand with the way our business is going for the next year or two? And then after two years, who knows how things are. As long as I'm buying in good location, it's going to go up. That's how I see it. 